board meeting. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. A copy of the Open Meetings Act is located on the north wall of the legislative chambers. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, We'll begin with the agenda for the Douglas County Board of Equalization. Roll call, please. Commissioner Boyle, Commissioner Duda, Here. Commissioner Kraft, Commissioner Here. Morgan, Commissioner Here. Rogers, Commissioner Tusha, Madam Here. Chair. Here. Item A, approval of the minutes of Board of Equalization meeting held Tuesday, March 22, 2011. And item B, call for a meeting and set Tuesday, April 5, 2011 as the date for hearing on certified assessment corrections reflecting the addition of omitted property to the tax rolls or increased value on property. Motion to approve A and B. Any questions or comments? Please, please vote. <laughs> Motion passes. Citizen comments, is there anyone in the chamber wishing to speak to the Board of Equalization about an issue not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to resolutions. There's uh, one, two, three, four resolutions, D through G. Motion approved and adjourned. Sorry. Any questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. We'll move to the agenda for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Roll call, please. Commissioner Boyle, Commissioner Duda, Commissioner Kraft, Commissioner Here. Morgan, Commissioner Rogers, Commissioner Tusha, Here. Madam Chair. Here. Item A, approval of minutes of Board of Commissioners meeting held Tuesday, March 22nd. And item B, approval of claims submitted for payment process through Tuesday, March 29th, 2011. The complete listing is on office in the office of the County Clerk Comptroller. Motion approve A and B. Second. Any questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. Consent agenda, there's a total of eight items, A through H. Okay. Okay. Motion approved. <laughs> Any questions or comments? I may, uh comment if I might. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Uh, concerning the uh, uh, item number C. Uh-huh. Uh, the only thing I hope and I, I'm very appreciative of the contribution that Steve Walker makes to all of us and to the county and the citizens as far as his uh, knowledge and his work uh, with the finance. You know, this agreement has in it that we can uh, terminate or he can with 30 day notice. My hope is as we work through the budget and into the summer um, that at some point we won't have to go all the way to December 31st. Uh, but um, I just want to mention that and support it. But, but I don't want us to have the idea that we have to uh, be committed till December 31st because of the budget restraints that we face. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I support this uh, resolution to have him on at this time. Okay, thank you. And I can probably say uh, Steve is hopeful that we don't have to go till the end. Of the year. <laughs> especially on, especially on sunny, nice days. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, duly noted. Any other questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. Next is a recognition and proclamation, and I would ask. Um, Steve, if you would uh, come to the front, and uh, Valerie, if you would join Steve at the podium, that would be, that's what I was thinking of. I know, <laughs> when you said that. As they're making their way, it's uh, my honor to read the resolution um, in honor of uh, Steve. As you know, Steve is going to be leaving us very soon um, on a full-time basis. Um, he loves us so much, he wants to stick around a little bit <laughs> here and there. Um, but I'll read the resolution uh, first. Whereas Douglas County Fiscal Administrator Steve Walker 
began his employment with Douglas County in February of 1981 as the Assistant Chief Deputy in the Douglas County Clerk of the District Court's Office, where he served for nine years. Whereas Steve Walker has been the county's fiscal administrator since January of 1990. And whereas after 30 years of dedicated service to the residents of Douglas County, Steve Walker has announced his retirement effective March 31st, 2011. And whereas during his tenure as fiscal administrator, Steve Walker has been instrumental in helping this board create fiscally responsible budgets to carry out the county's numerous and varied obligations and priorities, while at the same time maintaining one of the lowest tax levies in the state of Nebraska. And whereas over the past 30 years, Steve Walker's calm and steady demeanor, positive attitude, and outstanding worth ethic have served as an example for all county employees to emulate. And whereas Steve Walker has established and maintained positive working relationships and friendships across many of the Douglas County offices and departments, and has established a reputation of competency, honesty, loyalty, and dependability. And whereas Steve Walker will be greatly missed by his co-workers and numerous friends throughout county government. Now therefore be it resolved by this Board of County Commissioners, Douglas County, Nebraska, that this board hereby expresses its sincere appreciation to Steve Walker for his 30 years of dedicated service to Douglas County and further wishes Steve all the best in his future endeavors. Dated this 29th day of March, 2011. And I would ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Um, please vote. <laughs> Up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. three, three. Motion passes. Yeah. <laughs> The resolution does say it all, Steve, but um, really on a personal note, you've been, um, in my tenure here, um, just a total asset to me in uh, trying to find my way through things and uh, um, never really balked at any of the uh, uh, requests that I made of you uh, during budget time, even though people were pulling you in umpteen different directions. Um, I appreciate your professionalism and your quick response to everything that uh, the board has asked of you, and you will be sorely missed. Um, but at the same time, um, it is important that we in life choose a time where we still are able to enjoy um, our loved ones and our family, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Anybody else? Uh, Commissioner Duda? Yes. Uh, this is a, a bittersweet day for Douglas County. What what? I mean, Joe Lorenz has always known he had very big shoes to fill, uh, a tough act to follow. But what I think Steve's greatest asset for the county has been his, his trust, the trust factor, and, and his good communications. I often refer to county government as a multi-headed beast. Uh, we, we have many bo bosses and many priorities and many responsibilities, and Steve has done such a great job uh, of a balancing act. and whether it's department heads or elected officials, I, I think everybody has just had such a great comfort and trust level with Steve that that's, that's been your greatest asset. You are going to be sorely missed. Nice. I could almost take up golf just to come out and join you <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Commissioner Rogers. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think a lot has been said. I mean, the key word's probably been trust, but uh, I think anybody that has ever sat in the chair seat uh, can say that um, there's probably always some comfort to know when, when they can come in there and talk to you about the numbers and um, you know at least one of the first early lessons I learned that anybody in a, in a leadership position should understand where the money is and uh, at least I can speak personally when when I was in the chair see it was always good to be able to go in there and know I had a good set of numbers to go at somebody that could walk me through every aspect of what would happen when it was there so um, I'm sure you putting Joe in a position where he can be able to do that, but um, I, I appreciate, at least I know when my year was in the chair and, and the first budget situation was coming down, there was a sincere comfort in knowing that um, the numbers were, were going to be right and I had some comfort in where things were going, so I, I appreciate that and, 
in the last uh, seven years. And thanks. Commissioner Tricia. Steve, I haven't known you that long, but man, do I ever appreciate your patience with me when it came to the budget. I would walk in with my budget book with at least 500 little post-it notes with the notes on there, and you've spent hours, I know the last one you spent three hours with me, and I totally, totally appreciate it. You will be duly missed. You know, your, your friendship has meant a whole lot to a lot of people. I just want to know when you golf, though, whose names you're going to be putting on those golf balls when you get out. <laughs> and we'll take it. We'll we'll put out a, a little thing to see who's going to go the farthest. Up the golf ball. But thank you for your time and your patience with me. I truly, truly appreciated thank it. You. Thank you, Steve. Commissioner Kraft. Yes, and, and uh, picking up for Pam, uh, her statement about the 300 little post-it notes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your demeanor when you asked the same question seven different times by seven different commissioners, and and the pressure we put on you and your ability to handle that pressure without showing any tenseness. Mm -hmm. We really do mean it when we say we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Morgan. Well, I've known you the shortest amount of time, just a few months, uh, but uh, I've probably been in over 50 meetings with you since I started. And you really do have, and I'm not just saying this, a special manner and that trust that others mentioned. I just want to thank you for what you've done for the people of Douglas County, not only this board, but more the citizens, and really thank you for the kind of person you are. And I know your wife is very excited about your <laughs> retirement, and that's a good thing. Uh, so anyway, enjoy yourself, and uh, we'll look forward to working with you as we go through this budget process, and thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Kraft. Yes, and, and I'd just like to hear a few words from your wife about oh. when you go home at night. He, he does not carry the office home with him. He never has. When he comes home, he's home. And, of course, it's, he's home, but he's sitting at the computer doing county you know, spreadsheets, but he's, but he's home. He's, um, he's been a, as you guys know, he's been a wonderful person to be a husband. I mean, he just... I can't say anything wrong. Our time together has always been great, and I'm looking so forward to having him in the daylight. Oh. Because it just seems like it's been forever since we've gotten any time in the daylight. So it'll be great. Well, Steve, I know a lot of times you're a man of few words, but uh, you certainly have the podium now, so well, the mic now. Well, thank you. The, uh, it's been fun. There's so much variety to what we do. So you meet so many different, so many different people. That's why I miss is the interaction with all the, all the people. I've had the great pleasure to work for three uh, very good bosses, very wonderful people. Uh, Rudy Teaser was the one that let me in the county, so I won't forget him for that. Uh, Dean Sykes was was a great person to work for, and most of all, Kathy Kelly's been just super to to work for. She's very dedicated. One of the hard, hardest working people I've ever been around and uh, always very, very supportive, so I appreciate that. Our office, you have a great uh, staff of people in the administrative office. They're all very supportive. They're all great to work with. Um, I tried to do this on my on my own for the first several years, and then fortunately uh, were able to hire Sherry uh, Alvin to work with me. She's been great. I don't know what I would do without her. Uh, Candy and Sharon. And Ann for, for support, and uh, it's just been been great. All the people for Douglas County have been, again, very supportive, and, and I've enjoyed. Uh, there has been probably a handful of Tuesdays that I haven't enjoyed, but uh, <laughs> other, <laughs> other than that, I've been, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. So, Even thank you all. Just a handful. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> Trying to be nice. But, but again, thank you. Thank you very much. And I look forward to uh, the finance piece will be in good hands with Joe. So we will uh, continue to give him some information and uh, he'll do great. So well, thank you again. Thanks again. Commissioner's 
backyard for every little post-it <laughs> note I put on the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy it. Steve, thanks a lot. Thank you. And actually, thank you, Valerie, for letting us have, have him for so many years. <laughs> okay, with that, we'll uh, move on to citizen comments. Is there anyone here in the chamber wishing to speak to the board about an issue not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to public hearings. We have one, a Class C 93284 license, beer, wine, and distilled spirits on and off sale for Foursome's Virtual Golf at uh, 3510 North 167th Circle in Omaha, 68116. The manager application is Tracy Ginger from 805 Magnolia Drive in Papillion, uh, 68046. Um, the public hearing is open. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against this uh, application? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. There is um, action that can be taken today. What? Any questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is the Finance Committee. Um, first one uh, up in Commissioners Kraft and Morgan. Uh, Commissioner Morgan and I have been meeting with various department heads and going over the coming budget. The current budget is as presented. Uh, things seem to be on target. Um, we do have quite a challenge ahead of us. And um, we're going to be continuing to try to find ways to pinch pennies without affecting service. Uh, Commissioner Morgan? Yeah, I think that uh, says it all. The uh, uh, other thing I'd just say is I want to thank our chairperson uh, for her participation. I think she hasn't missed one of our budget finance meetings yet. Correct. And I just want to publicly thank you for participating. I, it's really appreciated and you bring a great contribution to uh, those meetings. Thank you. So that helps. Yes. Uh, and um, I think that's all we have for this week. Okay. Great. Uh, next is um, agenda items for the um, child and youth services. The first one is a resolution approving an agreement with Heartland Family Service for the provision of a bed for youth who are at risk to themselves or others but cannot be detained at the youth center. Madam Chair, do you mind if, would it be out of order to take two first? Because that's the easier, and I figured one we could, one would be some discussion. Okay. Okay. Uh, item two is the agreement with uh, Omaha Public Schools to permit data access and use student data to approve staff at Douglas County Youth Center directly access Omaha Public Schools to infinite campus student data system, Chris? And I know it, and that's basically uh, a non-eventful item that's been, been worked on. Um, Implement Campus is the district's site where all the information is. This will better, if there are kids in the center that are in OPS school district, this will better allow them to keep an idea of where their grade level is and, and us to teach them accordingly. So I would move approval. Second. Okay. Mar uh, Commissioner Kraft, please vote. Motion passes. Okay. Um, before I before I get into item one, um, I would encourage the commissioners um, not to try to understand it all in this one sitting because that's a kind of a hard task to do. And what uh, Commissioner Borks and I brought it today for for you to get an underlying understanding. The hope is that you know possibly next week. Um, we'd feel comfortable enough to act on it. The basic... Chris, can I interrupt? Yep. Remember, we, we can act today because yeah. they did the presentation at the budget um, meeting the other day. Yes, I, I okay. totally agree. Um, and if you all, 
uh, after you've seen hearing that the budget presentation are able enough to understand it under two presentations, that's very good. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> but I, I just say that in respects that we did have the initial uh, meeting to say that it, it might take a couple of chances to have it worn, worn through. But if we can get the day, that's that's great. The the foundation of it um, is that. Um, when LB 800 passed a couple of years ago, one of the pieces that was in there that was corresponding with federal law was that um, you cannot detain youth for a violation of a court order. Uh, that was one issue. But there's also a unique issue that has continued to rise up in our system in where um, youngsters that haven't been charged with a crime, they may be waiting to go before the court for a, a detention hearings. Um, have not been charged. Technically, they cannot be housed in a detention center at that time. There are unique circumstances where individuals are running. And when they run, they are possibly at risk um, of danger to themselves or the community at large. And these are not, you know, there may be rare cases where you may have some extraordinary circumstances, but the main piece is that the individuals are running and they may need some service. By them running, it is putting uh, law enforcement in an unusual circumstance of having to track them down, and it's actually putting uh, a lot of resources from the state and the county attorney's office at a point to get where they're at. One of the issues that was at point was um, probation doing a screening on them when they initially come. And through the work of the county attorney's office and the Cole Goalie, we've been able to come to peace with a way for state parole to do that, and it's worked very well. To state parole's credit, State parole, once they screen these individuals, have an option of placing a kid somewhere. State parole did not want to do that without the consent of the county board because we had not talked about it, and most likely the charge would come back to us in and out of home placement costs. Um, we had started this dialogue, and we had been talking about it for actually a good four weeks now. And then uh, we met with the chair to get guidance on where it possibly should go. That took it to the budget committee and now to here. The option on the table is just for the remaining of the year to allow us to purchase a um, bed at Youth Links to solve this runner situation and have a temporary hold until they can get before and they can get some service. In a longer term view, we, we have had some discussions and hopefully in a couple of weeks, a month or so, we'll be able to bring a longer term option on how we can solve the, the problem. and. Um, create another alternative to detention, which would help us with the rule that's actually a federal rule and we've implemented statewide. Is that a clean run of it? Yeah. And, yeah. okay, you well, you all, and you all can definitely, come, I just tried to lay it from there, you all can definitely come up and add um, the, the details to it. State your name and who you're with, please. Nicole Goley, Douglas County Attorney's Office. The only thing is, and you said it at the beginning, it's, it's state probation yeah. that is statutorily required to do the screening for placement. But absolutely accurate. And, and if I can interject here again, if any of the commissioners have any further questions um, about what they were presented with, um, uh, we'll take those. But um, I think it probably would be appropriate for Nicole and Carla just to kind of give us a brief of what has been going on, because I think you'll see um, uh, it's pretty impressive what um, has been put together um, to try to address this issue on uh, current resources that we have. So um, if they could uh, go ahead and just give a brief. Uh, basically, we have a situation within our community of the population of children called missing juveniles. I can tell you with Omaha Police Department on any given day, there's approximately 125 active cases of missing juveniles. On occasion, these juveniles are already under the court system and have capuses or warrants to be delivered to Douglas County Youth Center, but the overwhelming majority do not. When those children are located on the missing juvenile, they may have been gone for three hours, they may have been gone for a couple of years. We don't know what it is that they've been doing, what activities that they've been engaging in, and the routine has been that they are returned home. This is because that's all that the statute allowed for, and this has resulted in a, one youth I looked at yesterday, their record has run 21 times. What that means is on 21 occasions, law enforcement has had to respond to that home and take in that report. There's been an active case 21 times looking for that youth. And when the youth was located, law enforcement had to respond 21 times only to return them back to their parent for them to run again. 
With LB 800 now, law enforcement has the statutory discretion to deliver a child to intake probation as they would a law violator to screen them with an appropriate tool to determine whether or not there should be a placement different than home. That placement would not be able to include a secure detention like Douglas County Youth Center because the child has not broken the law. Uh, what we've been doing for the past six months is working daily with Omaha Police Department's Child Victim Unit, which uh, investigates the missing juveniles, worked daily with Carla Dish of Heartland Family Service and with our office as these ch children are located depending on the circumstances surrounding that child, which is communicated from the Child Victim Unit. The parent has come into our office and filled out an affidavit indicating they're uncontrollable. The case has been presented to a judge um, but what we've had to do for the majority of these until that time and we can get that paperwork done is call all hours of the night, um, including 3 in the morning, including 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving to Heartland Family Services, Carla Dush Youth Links, and ask if she could take the person, that child. Usually she made accommodations even if it was moving other youth around to get that child there so that they would be safe for the evening. And a couple of circumstances, it just couldn't be done and so that child was not able to be made safe on that occasion. But for the most part, um, I would have to say I don't know another person that has answered their phone on this many occasions at this rare times of the difficult times of the day to accommodate the situation and get those kids there. She also has done intake interviews on every one of those kids that have been placed there and provided those to the county attorney's office the next business day so that we could use that information to determine whether or not a filing was warranted and that information was presented to court. To validate um, what we've been doing and the good sense of law enforcement um, I will tell you that there hasn't been one single motion presented to a judge that has been denied in terms of making those children state wards and in terms of approving that placement until the next court date. There has not been one single request for Douglas County Sheriff transportation denied by the court in the last six months since Sheriff started working with us and Carla worked with us on the transportation procedures. And there hasn't been one case where the judge at the court hearing within the next 24 business hours changed and decided that the case didn't rise to the level that the child didn't need continued out of home placement and continuing in state's custody. The information that we obtained from the intake interviews was that these children were engaging in excessive drug usage more than I've read about in the 15 years that I've read reports as a deputy county attorney. Car accidents, burglarizing homes, uh, severe um, suicidal behavior, gang, gang behavior, participation in gangs. I, I've, you'd almost have to read every intake, but again, all I can kind of sum it up as saying is that not one step along the way were we on any given case given feedback that this isn't the level of, um, of care that this child needed. So we ask today that when these kids do come before us that we don't have to cross our fingers that there's a bed available to provide that safety and that assessment for the next day to get them in front of the court. And our goal is to eventually address these youth the first time or the second time so it doesn't get to the 21st time when there's no other options for that youth and now they have a criminal record. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Kraft? <clears throat> Yes, um, I, I agree with the need for this. It's a wonderful way of handling it and saving us money on the back end. Uh, I do need to ask our finance director, Joe, where are we going to come up with the money? What budget or what pot is it coming out of? It's, uh, we have some uh, room in this year's budget in the fees and contracts. Uh, so uh, we're going to fund it out of that, that account, the fees and contracts. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Tusha. Morning. Uh, thank you, Chris, for bringing this to our attention. I was able to attend the meeting with uh, you ladies, and you explained and told us the different stories like you're presenting today about the children that keep on running away and have no place to go. And with this, I know this is only a one bed, and I understand it's only for 90 days, but... <clears throat> 90 days, you know, to some of these kids is like a lifetime. 
and I, I wish you the best of luck. I, I know you will just fly with this, and I would hope that we could continue with it. But thank you for bringing it to our attention. I really appreciate your time and effort on it. Thanks. Commissioner Rogers. I just want to note, too, that um, this was this was an example where, uh, well, first of all, I would I would hope I can take some credit that we pounded this thing out for about six weeks. So hopefully, by the time it got to you all, the story is a little better because you all understood it quicker than I did. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but to their credit, <laughs> um, I mean to their credit, this was one of the you know this kind of originated out the coordinating council, and the code kept pounding and pounding. It, and we kind of went back and forth till I till I could understand enough and definitely get it to the chair, but. I mean, I would honestly say this this has been a good example of how, you know, we work with the state and been able to get everybody around the table and kind of hash something out in a situation where, where money's kind of been strained. I think one thing that the board should know is that um, in regards to the developing situations that have happened with the state and kind of contracting some things out in, in um, with the NFC and the KBC situation with um, kids that get placed in state care, there's been other things coming to our attention. One is that um, there is a degree of, of the kids that come here and that run that are from other counties. Now, there may be a share of our kids that go to the other counties, but and, and I don't know what that number is, but the thing that did pop out of it that was alarming was that there are some kids coming from like Lancaster County that are placed here. They're putting them here thinking they're not going to run. When they run here, we have to use all our resources to try to hunt these kids down. You know, and as a result of it, we did recommend to the state's advisory group, and they're going to set up a commission to try to note these situations and try to make some recommendations back up to the state about the situation with the contract service. It, I don't know if there's anything that was planned, but whatever it is, it's, it's causing some resources to be allocated out, and I don't know where that will take us in the future. Um, and the other piece is um, you know, Commissioner Borges and I have been able to talk through and I know Youth Links is talking to an agency outside that possibly, um, hopefully we can have an opportunity for it to expand some of this and have some long-term talk with the city in regards to some reallocations of JB costs on both of our ends that possibly can help us um, solve this staff secure issue, which is basically what it is. And Commissioner Tusa and Commissioner Dudo at the last uh, Child Youth Service Committee meeting where we did give um, the superintendent of DCYC some authority to kind of map out how we would turn the north side of the center into staff secure to help this problem. So I just wanted to put into the bigger picture of where that started and where it goes and hopefully how we can solve it in the long term. This is hopefully just a short time fix to get us a long term cure. So Commissioner Kraft. Yes, uh, Commissioner Rogers, you mentioned that sometimes we house students, uh, youth from other counties. Do the other counties reimburse us for this? Do you know? No, and that's an issue where, um, you know, when the chair talked and actually, you know, the county attorney himself was in there <coughs> and they agreed they probably need to make some noise to bring this to, to the awareness. And that's why I brought it up, just to put it on, you know, record that they've changed the system. There are a whole lot of kinks in the system. I mean, Nicole brought some out at the table with a couple of groups she's been doing it and noting it and that contract system is not exactly perfect yet. A lot of people are watching it. I know the legislature has put something in effect to monitor it, but I know this is one of the consequences that are, that are out of it that, you know, as you know, state aid gets cut and other things get cut, it is something to go back and say, this is an unintended consequence and we have to use resources to make this happen. And I just thought it probably should be noted. Nicole, uh, do we have the ability and the legal authority to build other counties? for this uh, holding fee? It, that would get very technical in terms of how it is that we would be holding them. It depends on, uh, my understanding, if they're placed here from another county and they commit a law violation, and that law violation has occurred within our jurisdiction, my understanding from Commissioner Rogers is that um, the first several uh, days to weeks of that is something that is charged to the county because that crime was committed here and that at a certain date that that is then picked up by Department of Health and Human Services because it's their ward. Best case scenario, we wouldn't have youth 
placed in our jurisdiction that are going to commit law violations that result in a victim to somebody that lives in our community and the county being responsible to pay for that child's secure detention because generally the level of care needed for that youth is known. And I do see that there's efforts that need to be made um, and we are going to address those in the statutorily required 1184 treatment team and investigative teams with Health and Human Services and with those contract providers that they now contract with about re being responsible in terms of where they're placing these youth and if it meets their level of care such that we could have and should have expected that there be another crime committed and that it be committed in Douglas <coughs> County because that's where they have them placed. So the, the, it's a little bit of a complicated answer, but when they commit a new crime, my understanding is that our county is paying for that detention. First and 10 days. For the first 10 days, okay. Uh, and, and I agree, we do need to have this. Um, and I, But I want the public to understand this is where their tax dollar goes. Right. And it goes as, I guess you could say, preventative maintenance is what you're describing. Uh, something else people don't understand is when a youth is put into the Douglas County Youth Center, that gives them bragging rights. Now, most of us don't understand why they think that's bragging rights, but if you put it in the right culture, in the right context, these young people go out there and, yeah, it was nothing, you know, yeah, I, I got three nights and, or ten nights or thirty days, and it gives them a higher stature among their peers in that grouping of, of uh, people and if we can just break this cycle and this is a way to start breaking the cycle. You definitely have my support. I just have questions. Absolutely. Because I, I don't want to give support and then see that the budget doesn't allow us to continue it. Abs I understand. Okay. It absolutely does begin to break that cycle because when you intervene with a youth at again like the first or second time running away from home and this is different being that these are, are children when they're unaccounted for, imagine what they're doing, and we got a glimpse of what they're doing from reading those intake reports from Youth Links. And if we can intervene at the beginning and show them that this behavior is not going to be acceptable and there is going to be an immediate intervention, whether or not it needs to be out of home or not, to address it instead of them thinking that they can do this 21 times and along the way commit those law violations, I, I think it is the first and best step to letting youth of this community know that this is not going to be acceptable and that somebody is going to address it with you when this happens and somebody wants to know why. Yes, and I agree. Thank you. Commissioner Duda. Thank you. I, I just want to thank uh, Nicole and Commissioner Rogers for your attention to this. And, and Commissioner Rogers, you're giving us too much credit if you say we've grabbed it, that we, we got it. <laughs> well, uh, I, I understand enough to know that we have some big, difficult issues uh, facing us and, and potentially expensive, but, but I'm more focused on what's the best way to address this. And Carla, I think you could probably find a job with better working conditions <laughs> and not the three o'clock in the morning calls, but, but don't look too hard for that. I, I appreciate the efforts, uh, the attention that is being paid to these big problems. Um, I, bragging a little bit, I think Douglas County has pretty much historically always kind of been at the forefront of, the, at least within the state of Nebraska, on the best way to address a lot of these issues. We, we kind of get hit harder with them than, than most counties. And, and I just appreciate that uh, Commissioner Rogers has kind of chosen this as his uh, area of interest. And, and we need a lot of attention on this area. And I'm so glad that, that you guys are doing this. And this sounds like a good plan, a good pilot project to bring our way. And I'm anxious to see where it can lead to. I appreciate your comments so much. And I need to tell you that five years ago when I started supervising the juvenile division of the Douglas County Attorney's Office, that the, the current lieutenant of the child victim unit was Barry DeYoung, who this was something that he requested assistance on, an issue that we knew that was out there, but we didn't have the resources, I didn't have the solid understanding of the situation, and we didn't have the statute that we have now. Following him was Lieutenant Kathy Belcastro Gonzalez, who asked for help, and Don went down to the Safe Haven Testimony in Lincoln and testified to the numbers that we had in Omaha with regards to missing juveniles. But again, at that time, uh, the statute wasn't clear about what, what we could do with this population. And for the past year, the lieutenant has been Lieutenant Trevor O'Brien with the Omaha Police Department in that child victim unit. And it has been unprecedented what we have done over the past 12 months that he's been lieutenant there in terms of the daily and direct contact that I have had with 
uh, Detective Tom Keevy, a retired Omaha police officer who's assigned to, to investigate the missing juveniles, and the coordination and the communication about every one of these youth and what would be best for those youth and knowing which ones they were and coordinating with the parents and having them come in. We had to do it the hard way and working with Carla and figuring out how we could address this population until we could figure out how it is we could come to you with a solid understanding of the issues. And without the child victim unit working with me like that, I wouldn't have been able to figure out the dynamics of the situation. Then came along November where nine youth over Thanksgiving week, boom, needed placement at youth links and the intake interviews of those nine youth that I then brought to the Juvenile Justice Coordinating Council and presented a case review of those nine cases that Dr. Liz Neely was sitting there with Commissioner Rogers and said this would be an issue for the working group and that's where it started. That's, that's where it started that we could address this population. I had already been working with the 1184 teams on the kids in the system and how we could transport them safer and the courts worked with me and the sheriffs worked with me and Carla was working with me but when those case reviews that I got those kids names from child victim that Carla took them that Commissioner Rogers listened to and we did the working group that we were able to bring in probation and say well you know there's already a statute here that you're supposed to be doing this that over the last three months we were able to work it out and bring you this information and know that we're solid and this is a population that needs to be addressed and we have an answer for how to address it. Very good. Thank you. Well, and again, um, I appreciate all the work that's been done on it. We still have work to do, as Commissioner Rogers uh, pointed out, but um, along with those uh, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock calls, uh, Nicole takes those as well. Um, from the county attorney's office, so her and Carla are kind of the dynamic duo of uh, addressing. Yes. Yeah. Um, so again, I mean, this is a, um, I think as far as a pilot, this will give us more um, data um, to go on in terms of um, when we go and talk to the state and talk about things that have to be further addressed um, at our level. So. Right. Um, I appreciate um, you bringing it uh, forward and that um, I appreciate the board's willingness to uh, support it and see what we come up with after 90 days. Thank you. I move approval. Second. Please vote. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Um, the next is community services. Um, Commissioner Drew, there's one item. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Uh, there is one item of reallocation of the visitor improvement funds for the Douglas County Historical Society. Uh, $3,900 that they were planning on spending on the exhibit down in Heartland of America uh, Park that they are now not changing exhibits. They, they're, uh, they're repairing the, the glass and the displays, but this same funding could better be used for them for advertising. So with that, I would uh, move for the approval. Second. Any questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. Uh, next is the criminal justice. Um, I'll go ahead and take it uh, since Commissioner Boyle is absent today. Um, the interlocal agreement with Sarpy County to authorize Douglas County Corrections to house Sarpy County work release inmates. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Any questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. Um, next are the human resources. Um, the first one is the weekly personnel report from civil service and that's as presented if there are any questions or comments on it um, legislative issues again where you have your uh, report in front of you and um, the majority of the debate uh, was LB 84 which um, was Senator Fisher's in earmarking a half cent uh, for roads um, out of the general fund money, um, which equates to about $125 million per year. Um, so um, that took up quite a bit of the week. Um, 
our LB600, which we talked about yesterday, um, adopting the Nursing uh, Facility Quality Assurance Assessment Act. We talked yesterday at the Board of Trustees, and that seems to be moving along uh, fairly well at this point um, in hopes that we don't have to fight a governor veto. Um, and that's about it for this week. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to mention? Um, if not, if after you read the report, if there's any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, next is a resolution expressing county board's intent to extend the current dental plan administrative agreement with MetLife for one year. And we can take four or two together. It's a resolution expressing the county board's intent to extend current medical plan administrative agreement with United Healthcare for one year. Second. Any questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. And um, we do have need for an executive session for labor negotiations and litigation. Before we go into executive session, um, please note that there is an administrative services committee meeting following this board in room 903. With that, I'd ask for a motion to go into executive sessions for stated purposes. Second. Please vote. Sure. <laughs> Motion passes.
thing. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Motion to reconvene and adjourn. Second. Thanks. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Hey, I was just saying about that. Uh, the uh, the uh, Carol Johnson. What? Mark. Oh, okay. Yeah. The one who. Okay. Motion passes, I guess. <laughs>